So Uber genuinely thinks it can win its battles by intimidating cities, uh, states, countries, right? They have an army of attorneys over there and they ruthlessly utilize these individuals against anyone that stands in the way. So Toronto now, next target for Uber. What do they do? They threaten with legal action after a driver freeze. But one has to actually look, why, why did this driver freeze take place in Toronto in the first place? Uber did not like that news and out the threats go. Um, I know that firsthand. I've been dealing with them for years with the legal department. Probably the channel that has filed the most cases and funneled the most cases to class action law firms and any other individual out there. And um, obviously they don't like me, right? And they don't like the fact that I have such a strong portfolio of powerful attorneys on my side as well. So we test them, we try them, we keep them busy with the ride share professor channel. But beyond that, <clears throat> um, when it comes to city problems, right, or issues, there's always threats. So we'll pull out or we'll file, 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 right? So, and, and Tony West leads that. In fact, they, they, they incentivize him. They incentivize him with bonuses uh, if he can save the money, if he can save the company money, right? He gets a lot of additional money by keeping his team of lawyers busy. This is how they roll. They obviously also have specific protections politically up on top in the United States, right? They have a lot of protections built in, um, very, very well documented. Now, um, so Uber threatens the Toronto with legal action after driver freeze. Uh, as Toronto grapples with how its vast network of gridlock roads contributes to climate change, a new policy agreed by local officials is receiving mixed responses. Uh, on Wednesday, council has passed a motion to freeze the registration of new vehicle hire drivers, including with companies like Uber and Lyft. The new policy means the number of drivers cannot rise above its current level unless they're driving a zero emissions vehicle, right? Uh, while local taxi companies and advocates welcome the news, obviously taxi companies are happy about that. They're not happy that Uber and Lyft are taking their trips away. Um, Uber itself hit back in a statement arguing the move will increase costs and wait times, right? That's their classic. Oh, we're going to increase the costs and the wait times for your riders. And that if you're a politician or if you're a statesman, that's going to cost you votes, right? That's a sort of like the go-to threat. That's the initial threat. And then they march in the paperwork, right? Well, local taxi companies and advocates welcome the news. Uber itself hit back in a statement arguing the move will increase costs and wait times. The ride-sharing giant threatened to take the city to court. Oh, wow, good luck with that one. Saying it was reviewing all legal options, right? So th these, are, these are threats right now, but that's, that's how Tony West and his legal team, that's how Uber, that's how Dara Koshashawi rolls, threat after threat. Most of this is just bluff, right? They love bluffing. And um, sadly, some of these cities buy into these bluffs. Uber said the cap on its drivers would hurt the diverse group of Torontonians who rely on rideshare as part of their transportation mix and those who drive rideshare for additional income. Local taxi companies, on the other hand, said say the policy brings parity in an industry they feel has favored app-based companies since they arrived in Toronto more than a decade ago. It was encouraging to see Mayor Olivia Chow stand up to big tech and challenge the status quo. Christine Hubbard, operation manager with Beck Taxi, told Global News, a cap on the number of vehicles is good for the environment and gets us closer to environmental goals. Others, including transit advocates, welcomed the decision, saying it could help restore ridership on Toronto's public transit, which has struggled to rebound since the COVID-19 pandemic. We need to make sure the ride-hailing ride -hailing complements public transport rather than replacing it, right? Says Pizzi Allen from the advocacy group TTC Riders. This pause ensures we won't repeat the mistakes of the past while work on a balanced framework for the sector that moves forward. Um, the cap for more drivers could be in place for as long as a year while city staff assess the best options to move forward. Councillors asked for a comprehensive report on ride-sharing taxis and the emissions they cause 
to be completed by the last quarter of 2024. The number of drivers will be capped at its October 12, 2023 level until the report is completed, right? So they basically, they say, Uber, you ain't going to do nothing until your report is in. And right now we have a driver freeze. So uh, good luck, I would say, Tony West with that one taking on Toronto. I don't think that's a battle that they're going to win. They're going to have to, um, they're going to have to reach some sort of a, a compromise. Um, but um, I, me personally, I don't see Uber winning that one. What are your thoughts? Have a great day. Thank you.